Real talk live with Rodney Grimes. People to people, power to power, positive thinking people. Yes, with Sir Rod and Lady Z. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about we. And God we trust. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's People to People with Rodney Grimes. As you know, I always get excited every time that I get on the air because, you know, I like to show that I care, right? You know, I'll be trying to get the right information to you, you know, talk about things that's going to help build your imagination, support your business, uh, just show your talent or whatever the case may be. But uh, <clears throat> before I get started and introduce my guest today, um, you just want to make sure that I can just do a few shout outs and talk about some things and something I, I was on my mind real heavy um, Many many people celebrated Mother's Day yesterday So a lot of people I didn't say happy Mother's Day to them because I believe that every day Every mother should be treated like a queen So for all those that didn't get that greeting from me Don't get mad and don't take it personal because I'll buy you flowers on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and July, February, March, it don't matter. Especially when I know that you are handling your business. And I do the same thing on Father Day as well. The only day that I think that everybody should really, really get excited about is your birthday. That's the day that just belongs to you. You should celebrate it and be happy that God has given you the life to be able to move forth. So, I said that because, you know, again... Many people was running around, happy Mother's Day, this and that. And then half of them don't even call the mom the next day or don't talk to them for a week. Don't go buy them no flowers or groceries or whatever is necessary. But I think that if you just really want to really celebrate, celebrate life every day. Show them that love. Call them. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Also, um, I wanted to do a shout out to uh, my sister, um, we celebrated my nephew's uh, birthday uh, yesterday, um, his first birthday without him being here with us. And I just want to say to my family, it was an amazing event. Um, I sent peace and blessings to everybody. And I just want to say thank you for the love we shared last night on the program, that Zoom uh, program. Okay, I have an amazing man in the studio with me today. His name is Alex Bacon, right? Yes, sir. Alex Bacon. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Very happy to be here. So, so I first of all, a lot of times, Alex, every time I talk to people, I try to let people know I like to talk to people who are doing things, who are making things happen. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, I'm a um, HVAC mechanic, uh, background in building automation and control systems. Uh, I have a awesome 10 year old daughter who's like the coolest kid I know. Uh, and I, you know, believe very fully in, in health and, and taking care of yourself. Yeah, that kind of, I saw that with them cannons you got over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we was talking earlier, I was at it. I asked Alex, I said, yo, I might want to give one of them secrets so I can just pump some <laughs> cannons up on these here, you know. So, but, uh, so you're originally from? Uh, so, yeah, so I'm originally from Southern California. Okay. Uh, and then grew up in Northern Virginia, in Manassas area. Okay. Yep. All right. And so, uh, and as you, 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 so are you like a trainer when it comes to the health, or you just do um, that, just so, take care of yourself? Yeah, Ed, Ed, there were some time ago, um, I was, you know, I would do personal training and stuff, um, but I, I found that I, I enjoyed um, concentrating more so on myself for, you know, in, in that aspect. Um, okay. So, yeah. So the things that you do now professionally, yes, um, I, I, all of that plays a factor in your everyday living, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I, um, you know, as I said, I believe, you know, very, very wholly and fully in health. 
Um, so, you know, kind of what I put into my body uh, is, is, is very important to me. That's something I take very, very seriously. Um, and, you know, a couple years back, I, I started, uh, you know, growing my own food, you know, fruits, vegetables, flowers, things like that, um, which kind of uh, led me to, to where we are today okay. uh, with my company. Okay. And that's good when we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. So knowing what's in your food, yeah. you know, it's really important. Yeah. Because a lot of people, we go to the grocery store, we have a tendency to buy things and think that it's organic. Right. And we don't even realize um, they may say it was organic because they thought it was right. organically grown, but didn't know really was it what was in the soil and things right. like that. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what you concentrate on things like that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like to you know concentrate on on you know what I think I can be uh, you know do the most positive uh, effect at, um, and you know it's it's uh, you know what you put in is what you get out. You mm -hmm. know it's it's uh, I I think that's applicable in many aspects of life. Um, and certainly when it comes to what you're putting into your body. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's always something that I've taken very seriously and, um, you know, kind of brought us to where we are today with what I've been working on. Okay. So did you go to school for? No. <laughs> uh, actually, funny you should ask. Um, I went to school for broadcast journalism and uh, English. Actually. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, what is it about men? Boy, we love English. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, I don't know what it, but I, that that was one of my favorite subjects too. Yeah. Yeah. I I think there's a there's you know whole other worlds uh, that can open up you know through through writing and books and just um, the the art of storytelling. Yes. Um, you know, and there's just such beauty in that that uh, you know it can just take you wherever you want to go oh. type deal. And everybody has a story. Everyone has a story. Everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I find is really important. That's part of the reason why we have people to people. Mm. What we like to do is we like to hear people's story. We want to hear the truth, their life, the things that they're doing, the young entrepreneurs coming up, people who have talent that they want to share, mm -hmm. and the new information. Being that you are now concentrating on these things where you are helping to grow things, mm -hmm. Can tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I'm a I'm a I'm a man of method and approach, uh, in you know in in how I approach things, right? Uh, and and as I started growing uh, and doing my research, you know, uh, and spending a lot of money on all the wrong things type deal, you know, believing the hype on this or this guy's blog or this or that, um, I really started to dial down. Uh, my abilities in growing, right? Um, my background is uh, HVAC, right? Heating, ventilation, air conditioning, then refrigeration. But my subset of that is is automation controls. Uh, and a part of what I do, um, I have to take care of, uh, or rather I get to take care of very large water systems, which require, you know, proper pH and PPM and all, all these different things that you know normally people wouldn't really think about mm -hmm. uh, but when you start growing in hydroponics the that num those numbers that those metrics they become very valuable uh, and they become you know uh, the 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 kind of foundation uh, as to where you're building off of um, so i started uh, incorporating controllers uh, you know control systems from my industry uh, into, uh, you know, a growth system. Uh, and um, that's really brought us to, to where we are today. Um, I, I worked on centralizing all of these different controllers into one manageable system mm -hmm. so that, you know, the people who are fantastic at growing, um, that's, that's awesome. Uh, you know, their information will, will help enable, you know, people who aren't so great at growing. Um, because of the advancement in uh, how essentially how the controller is taking the information in the sensor information, the temperature, the light, the you know all these different things, we're forming programs from that, uh, which enable us to to look at uh, essentially create blueprints, genetic blueprints on all these different plants, on all these different strains, so that we can say. You know, heirloom tomatoes actually prefers this nutrient ratio at this point. And as a result of that, we were able to increase our yields 12%, you know, things like that. So the, the, the idea behind the controller is that 
you know, I, I have a mother. She's, you know, in her, <clears throat> I won't say, right. but, uh, you know, she wants to be able to grow vegetables year mm -hmm. round, right. you know, uh, and we don't live in a climate that that's realistic. Right. So I kind of started going about it with that, uh, you know, that thought process, okay. right? I wanted to make it easy for her to be able to do and get the yields that these experienced growers are getting without having the years and the, the time and the, the money and all these different things that a lot of people wouldn't think to look at. So we work to create a controller or a system that takes care of all that for people. So, so basically, we're in a day and time now, as we know that people are not just growing fruit, they're mm -hmm. actually growing other things like uh, marijuana. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So how does that work in that? Would that be something that would be beneficial? Because after a while, I mean, people are going to be able to grow that right in their house and, 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 and people use it for medication. I mean, or, we're, we're in the state of Virginia, you know, and the way that I see it, the way that I understand it, the way that I view health, um, that is a that is a medicine. Yes. You know, uh, and I am able to grow and concentrate my medicine based on what my immediate and exact needs are. Right. I can go to a dispensary and they'll say, okay, well, this is good for this, 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 and this, but if you have this, then probably don't take that. Right. Well, now I can grow my plants the way that they need to be grown. And not have to worry about no no it's it's crazy chemicals and things. You're and not yeah you're not doing the crazy chemical. I mean you're tracking and trending every aspect of what goes into it. And you know the system alone again it's it's fully automated right? right. So the only thing that you have to do is change your reservoir and put your hands on time on the plants. Right. Which is really the fun part. Right. But you know you're you're talking the system from the beginning from the basics of the the program to run will produce a pound every 16 weeks. Well, you know what I like where we're going in the future right now? First of all, is people getting educated. Yeah. So we're starting to get people where they understand there's a difference between growing tomatoes, right. growing flowers, growing marijuana, right. or whatever. I mean, but you get it to where it makes it so that it's a benefit right. for you right. versus something that's going to cause harm. Right. And so we have a lot of people now that are able to do these things at home and they can actually sustain uh, their life correct at a different level yeah they can they can enhance uh, uh, their quality of life yes you know because in, in the end that's that's what it's about right, right. is is um, you know I'm 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 a you know an individual that's that's suffered through addiction you know and what I put into my body is so important yeah. to me you know what I mean our health our um, you know, our longevity, our lives, like at a certain point we have to take, take control of that, Yeah. you know? Uh, and I got to that point where I started making decisions that I was going to control, you know, what I wanted to put into my body, uh, because I understood what affected me the best. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say thank you for you. I mean, and I'm saying this, thank you for you loving yourself enough to make the change. It's a lot of people out there who don't understand you know, it's a process. You have to you have to love yourself, yeah. and you have to get to a point where you start to understand what's going on. Absolutely. To have a good time, there's nothing wrong with having a good time. No. But have a good time and have a healthy good time. Yeah. You there's know, and there's a important. big difference. Yes. You know, and and it's it's harder to differentiate that. Um, you know, I feel when you're younger in life. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with age comes comes our wisdom and our knowledge, and um, you know, I'm able to to look back and. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Well, we're in a different day and time, too. Now we have programs like this that we can talk about it right. openly. Right. Instead of we having kids trying to figure out, yo, you can go to a program and figure out, okay, if this is what I want to do, right. do it correctly. Right. Don't have to break the law, what you're going to do. And I'm talking, so it, that could be anything. You could be growing tomatoes and grow so many tomatoes and have where you kind of, doing little extra things to your tomatoes and your tomatoes start making you feel like a superman you That's know right. it's it's cap you're capable of doing these things right but when you get to education have individuals like yourself right who talk about it educate people and let us see yo this is what you can do to move forth to have a very very good life right and be a responsible individual right 
put what you want in your body, excuse me, that's necessary. Right. And do it without harming anyone. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate you for that. Oh, it's my so, so, you know, I always think about this back in the day. We're talking about, when I think about the Indians, you know, back in the day, um, they, they used to uh, grow their stuff and, and I, and I, I, I know, I'm sure they used to uh, grow different foods or whatever or however they did that. But at the same time, I always wondered about the peace pipe, mm. right? And I said, I used to laugh. I said, we would take all uh, things that was happened many years ago and, and, and get involved in it and mess things up. It looked like we got a caller already calling in. Hello, caller. Can you state your name and where you're calling from? Good day. This is Queen Rachel. I'm calling from District Heights, Maryland. Hello, Queen Rachel. How you doing? I'm good. Blessed to be here today. How about yourself? I am blessed as well. Well, I'm happy to hear that you have King Alex Bacon on the show today. Yeah, Alex, he's uh, giving us a little information on just... Uh, um, he, 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 he helps uh, grow things in a very, very healthy way. Well, that's what I'm, I'm trying to learn more about. Um, uh, I want to ask him a couple questions. Go ahead. Because I'm all about, you know, prepping and everything. And um, I want him to know because he said hydroponics, right? Yes, ma'am. Hydroponics. <laughs> Okay, so here's my question pertaining to that. Uh, how can you grow, you know, the potatoes and beet things that grow under the ground with hydroponics? So there's definitely more research that, that needs to be done uh, on that. Um, and that's, you know, w with my system, we're, we're going to further testing uh, that sort of, um, essentially that those exact things, right? There are certain okay. things that grow better and certain things that will, you know, either not grow or not do well based on the fact that they are uh, under soil growing, you know, okay. like they, they grow okay. under the soil. So um, okay. it's certainly not out of, uh, out of the realm of possibility. It's just more, more research needs to be done on mm -hmm. the proper way to do that. Okay. Uh, my next question is um, the fertilizer in the water what would you suggest to put in to keep the plants alive so that's a very interesting question uh and this is where personal preference comes in um okay. the neat part about the controller and about the system is that all of the information that you put in is stored right so let's say rodney's growing heirloom tomatoes and i'm growing heirloom tomatoes and Rodney wants to use, you know, uh, a, a different brand of nutrients, and I use a different brand of nutrients. We mm -hmm. run the exact same grow program. I produce 10 more tomatoes than yours. My system sees that, and we update that file in accordance, right? So right. To, to answer the nutrient question, it's honestly going to come down to preference. As the plants progress through the different stages in growth, those numbers change. Mm -hmm. The three okay. nutrients that they need are nitrogen, phosph uh, phosphorus, and uh, potassium. The NPK ratio for uh, when a plant is vegging, right, growing its leaves and setting itself up to uh, be able to produce a uh, flower uh, is vastly different than what it needs during its flowering, uh, you mm -hmm. know, flowering cycle. Um, a lot of the manufacturers will put out trios, um, and one of them will be for veg, one of them will be for flower, and likely the other is normally like a rooting nutrient or something that will support it to, to strengthen its nutrients. Um, so this is where a little bit of experimentation comes in. You know, you get to kind of play around and uh, look at the different uh, look at the different manufacturers and. They go mm -hmm. about it in different ways. You know, some of them are legitimately all natural and you might get some globs of whatever it is pouring out your nutrients and others mm -hmm. are chemically synthesized and don't affect pH in the water and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so. I know. Okay. Um, I had a spirit myself. I created um, 
my closet turned into a greenhouse. And I decided to experiment on the ginger root and mm. the pineapple. Oh, I have went, I put a little water in there. I let the water sit overnight. And then I put a little bit of water in there. And then I put a little water with the pineapple. I went away by the month. I come back, there was new growth in the pineapple as well as the ginger. Mm. And then I said, okay, now let, let me create some dirt by composting. I decided to put some seaweed in there, some molasses, things that I like to eat, like bananas and strawberries and stuff. You think that will work for growing new dirt? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I think that um, if you're... I, I, there are a lot of ways that you can create your own dirt. Uh, and essentially the way that you go about doing it is by doing exactly what you're doing. Um, you're creating okay. compost and there, there are certain things that are going to be better for it, certain things that are going to be worse for it. Um, you know, stuff like coffee grounds, uh, use yeah. coffee grounds actually affect like pH levels and will ha actually help neutralize acids. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, there's all sorts of, all sorts of different ways to go about it. Uh, and it's the type of soil that you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, but I okay. mean, it sounds like you're doing some really cool experiments. <laughs> That's definitely true. <laughs> so I'm not going to hold up the line. Um, thank you, Rodney, for having him on the show. Uh, they no helped problem. me a whole lot. Much love to you there, Queen Rachel. Okay. Peace thank, and love. Thank you very much. Take care. So, so that just brings me to thinking. So I was just thinking about, so when people are growing things, isn't this what you're doing? Isn't this how they also create new roses and things of that nature? Yeah. So the roses are done, I, I believe, genetically, right? So you, we can do crossbreeding, right? Um, and and crossbreeding is is about like pollination and and you know uh, kind of going about it that way. Um, I'm, I'm more so, my interest is more so in the metrics, in mm -hmm. the information, mm -hmm. right? So we've, we've enabled, uh, essentially an unprecedented level of information that comes, you know, all the time, right? So we, you, you know, at any point you can open your phone and say, okay, well, it's 72 degrees with 55% humidity, the light is, you know, the, the PAR is measuring at this, the, you know, water temperature is this, all these different aspects that, um, you know, as you get further along and progress through your knowledge and ability of growing, you learn effect, you learn that they, it, it affects the grow heavily. Yeah, and I'm listening because I love plants too. Yeah. So I have uh, different plants in the house. Not many, but I have maybe, I, may, I think I may have maybe about 10. Sure. Right? And, and as I was listening to you and thinking about it, because sometimes I was trying to figure out why is some of my plants doing good in one area and why on some they're not doing so well. Mm -hmm. But then you mentioned about coffee grain. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I don't know where I heard that from, but it, that's good to add to the soil? So, yeah, it can, it'll, it'll help balance the pH of the soil. Um, and you know, it can provide some aeration as well. And, um, yeah, it's certainly not bad. I mean, anything in, in too high of a quantity, is, you know what I mean? Soil, creating your own soil, making your own soil is about creating a balanced, um, you know, package essentially. So, so, oh. I have a question, so. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Does it matter if it's decaf or caffeinated coffee grinds? So. You know, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I will tell you this, that um, decaffeinated beans are decaffeinated chemically. Um, so, you know, they use chemicals to actually pull that caffeine out. Uh, and, and, and that's just like me thinking out loud, right? Uh, I, so beyond that, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I wouldn't imagine so. Um, but there's a different process that goes in line with creating a a you know decaf coffee bean versus you know one that's just been roasted and pulled right so actually it is something that's done mm -hmm. to it that, that makes a difference correct the yeah. caffeine is naturally occurring yeah um so yeah they have to go in and they have to actually extract pull that out to make decaf coffee well i i, I mean this is this is really really phenomenal for many people who don't really know, there's a science to it, mm. you know. And some people just think that you take and drop seeds in the dirt 
and give it some sunlight and water and it, it it's just going to do well anyone anyone can grow it right uh, it takes careful thought and an application of knowledge to do it well um, and you know time you know time is our best experience right I've I've messed up a lot of grows in my time you know um, but I also you know haven't and 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 everyone that I do mess up on I learn from mm -hmm. uh, and that's really the point of the system you know is to 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 bridge that gap between uh, you know novice and experienced growers and and help them through those growing pains you mm -hmm. know those things that they don't understand at different aspects that will affect you know their grows on such high levels so how with this technology and this information that you have what level will this go with the farmers so i'm i'm very interested honestly and in, um I, I think that my my big push just like personally would be um you know working with like universities uh and then and then farmers as well farmers um in my experience that I've seen are, are less, there are, there are certainly hydroponic farms that are, that are being built out and coming out now and, and they're producing wonderful and fantastic things. Um, getting, you know, an older school farmer to switch from soil to massive hydroponic setups, you're talking about changing, you know, the basis of their understanding for every aspect, right? Because it's now no longer the sunlight and conditioning soil. It's, you know, soilless medium and, you know, creating different light and mimicking sunset and all of these different things that would be pretty scary to, to approach uh, if, uh, you know, or, or to approach in an unstructured sense. Right. Um, so I, 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 def I personally think that hydroponics are, um, you know, kind of the way the the wave of the future, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to agriculture. So when when you say hydro, hydroponic, mm -hmm. so is that kind of break that down for me? What is it that's so different from? Because it sounds like it's not you're not growing it the regular way. You're not, yeah. So hydroponics is based in growing in soilless medium. So you're not growing the plant in soil. Um, there's different mediums that you can use where, you know, you're conditioning, you condition the entire environment and everything like that, but it is not sitting in a pot of soil. Um, it may be sitting in, you know, there's, there's several different, you know, hydroponic mediums, clay pebbles, plastic pebbles, um, you know, rock wool, all these different things that specifically are not soil and thusly require different conditioning and a different method of approach. Mm. That make me sound like I got to go back to chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you because I mean, but is it that is it is it complicated? It's once you understand it, and once you understand the basics on how hydroponics work, uh, I, I I believe it's easy. Okay. You know, uh, and and that's what our controller does, right? It 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 bridges that gap between that level of understanding. Hydroponics consistently produce higher quality, higher quantity, um, you know, the numbers, the studies, everything is there to, to show that, to prove that. Um, I think that, you know, soil offers a different, um, you know, again, structure to it, right? Uh, but the, the level of production or, you know, call it the grams per watt, right, whatever it is, uh, is much higher and proven through hydroponics. Uh, so, you know, our ability to, to, you know, manipulate and push these plants to the edges of their genetics and then beyond, we now have unparalleled ability to do that because, we, I, I mean, I literally went to India to find sensors that are not made in, they're, they're not produced in America, like all of these different things that um, through my time and my studies and like my own personal headache, uh, you know, I was able to, to like bring these together and put them into a system uh, and, and just see like the level and ability uh, of, of what can be done. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good grower. Uh, I, I, I may be great someday. I'm very happy to admit that there are a lot of other growers that are massively better at it than me. And I would just be, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine the potential of what would happen if my system you know, we're to get in these hands of these these growers that are doing two and a half grams per watt, four grams per watt. You know, it's it's certainly not unheard of, and it's definitely out there. 
um, that you know the, they're just pushing things so much further. Yeah. Uh, and and the data alone that comes with this. I mean, we're mapping the genetic blueprints on on every every grow that you do, every plant that you put in there. You're systematically mapping the genetics of it. So so you know what's getting ready to happen with this information. We're going to have individuals whom it's going to take. And I don't want to I don't want our our viewers for many people uh, who don't understand where we are moving in the future where we're talking about uh, medical marijuana, mm -hmm. okay? So we're talking about things of that nature. A lot of people already know about growing tomatoes. Yep. They know about growing corn. They know about growing lettuce. But now we're getting to a point where we're starting to have these different areas coming up where we're going to be having people understand how to get the different grains of marijuana grown. This is what I wanted to ask you. I remember back um, in my younger teen days, they had where they had Columbia Red and Alcapopa <laughs> Gold. Was those, uh, when they had those labels, was that based on the fact of a certain way that it was grown? So, those older, a lot of those older legacy genes mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, come from the region, right? So, the Panama Gold strain, you may remember, which, which, uh, legitimately had a, a golden hue to it. Yes. So that was very specific, and that was done in Panama. Okay. The gentleman who actually pioneered that, um, he was he was you know a pirate grower, uh, and he was a taxi driver, uh, you know, and he was able to you know when when you when you breed plants right you bleed you breed for the best genetics. Right. Some sort of mutation happened where he produced gold pot and he took that and run with and ran with that yeah. and bred it and you know brought it to where it is you know today um so yeah i you know these these different strains you know people build off of them they grow off of them they you know manipulate them um and that's just kind of where we are like technology was today so so, so I, I mean listening to what you're saying it just excites me because i see where it's going to be very beneficiary to us yeah and i see where it's going to be things like uh whether it, not we does this have to be marijuana, but I'm just talking about things that um, we start to be able to control and be able to manufacture manufacture them to help us health wise. Right. So right. instead of us destroying our bodies, we'll be able to enhance right. our bodies at different levels. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I'm doing my grows. You know, my nutrient dosing and the nutrients that I'm using, my different MPK levels, all of these different things, they are uh, specific. And they're specific in effect that I'm manipulating the plant to produce, you know, the different cannabinoids, the myrcene, the limus, you know, all these different things uh, for medicinal value, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know, you know, what helps me with my anxiety and what helps me with my anxiety may not help you. Right. You have different needs than I. We're to, we're two entirely different people. Right. Right. So we may suffer from the same you know uh, same things, but what helps me may not help you. Right. We want people to have the ability to say, "This isn't helping me. I'd like to have an educated way to go about helping myself." Right. You know. And that's where we're talking about with the different pharmacies and what they're doing. They're really becoming very educated and mm -hmm. understanding on the needs of individuals right. on the levels what is their personal desires right right which is a good thing yeah absolutely you know it's like a, a, a kind of a comparison that I like to use is you know uh, mass large-scale public education is only about a hundred years old you know, uh, and, and the, the, the current answer is standardization, right? One thing will just have to work for everyone. But as time has been progressing, we're realizing that that's not how life works. You know, you can't tell a fish that his merit is, uh, you know, measured by his ability to climb a tree, right? That doesn't make sense. So time progresses, our ability and knowledge and ability to understand that knowledge progresses. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, you know, kind of where we are today, right? We, we have this, uh, this ability to look at information on a level that's like unheard of. Yes, yes. That's, that's uh, I, I collect uh, tropical fish. Mm. And, and so um, 
listening to you talking about these different ways of um, developing different strains and things of that nature. Um, don't want people to think I'm sounding crazy, but that's also how they use um, creating different type of uh, species um, where they would take the eggs from one fish and switch them sure. to get spawned by another fish mm -hmm. and these fish would be they would come out like they got what is called a parrotfish. This is a cross breed of like a, a red devil and a, a convict or, mm -hmm. or something. Or a, a, um, I forgot uh, what the name of the other fish is. But anyway, what happened is they created this fish and it, it's a very unique fish. So <clears throat> I say that now, here we are with the technology, the technology that we have now we're getting to a point where we're going to be able to start growing things that's going to really, really help us. Right. We're going to be able to start to, I believe, and I believe that we're already at this point where we're going to be able to start to be able to uh, attack cancer. We're going to be able to, to attack different illnesses that come about mm -hmm. with our bodies based on the knowledge that we have. And we, we talked about earlier, understanding what you put in your body. Right. I think, you know, it... it what you put in is what you get out, yeah. you know, and, and people don't understand that, that, you know, convenience, convenience obviously plays a large role in a lot of people's lives and, and that's understandable, you know, but at a certain point you have to tell yourself what I'm doing matters mm -hmm. and what I'm putting into my body matters. Yes. Right. That is how we, that, that's like your, 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 your basis. That's where you start. Right. I have to look at myself and figure out why I'm, why I am the way that I am, right? Yeah. Now, I know some people might let that slip through, but just think about what he just said. When you pay attention, what you put in your body, how you're taking care of your body, you can have a, a, a way of starting to see and understand how you will be tomorrow. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And a lot of people are not getting that. They're wondering why we're struggling with depression and we're struggling with addictions and all of these things because you're not really paying attention to how things are being grown, formed, and what you are, what is, certain things we only should have a certain limit of how much we take in anyway. Sure. So, yeah. this so, so here's a prime example, right? So the recommended average uh, daily sugar intake for an adult is roughly 25 grams of sugar. Um, a, a Mountain Dew uh, 20 ounce has 79. <laughs> so, you know, th there's you know, there's just no way to win in those scenarios. Oh my goodness! You know, you're either, you know, intaking three times your amount of daily sugar in one go in a soda, or you know, you can drink a third of it and put it back. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you'd you know? be smart about it, then you understand that I'm not, we don't have nothing against Mountain Dew. No, Break them no, if you certainly. Want them, yeah, but, no, you know, but, but what we're saying is, is that you got to understand what you're putting in your body. Exactly. Yeah, it's nothing specific to the brand. It's right. just, you know, if you look at any of the sodas, you know, a 12 ounce can usually has like 46 to 50, 55 grams right. of sugar in yeah. it. That's twice your daily intake. Wait, we speaking about that. Did you know back in the day when Coca Cola? Did you know that Coca-Cola used to have Coke in it? I did, yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't interesting. know Interesting, yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah, and they didn't understand. Back in the day, I remember when I was young, I mean, it was certain older individuals wanted their Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. you know? And I didn't learn this until later on in my years. I was like, why were they so into the Coca-Cola like that? But it was part of what was being put in it. Right what you are putting into your body that causes you to start having these certain reactions. Right. And you know what's something else? Alex, I'm gonna tell you something that that's really, and, and again, I applaud you on this. One, the fact that you used to abuse your body before. You flip it around, now you're getting where you're taking care of your body, and you are becoming knowledgeable about other things for the future for other people's body. I uh there's a definitive part of my life where I made very poor decisions for a long time. Uh and you know, when I had clarity, when I when I got clean, 
uh, I made health a huge focus, a huge part of my purview. Um, you know, I've been clean since August 3rd, 2013, right? So it's, you know, for, for a long time now, uh, my, my health uh, has been a, pri you know, a very large concern. And when I started uh, affecting my own health, and started moving forward with this project and kind of, you know, thinking uh, about the, the potential of impact. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to shift my focus. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I, I asked myself one day, you know, I, is this the way that I can positively affect the biggest amount of people? And I believe it is. That is so cool. Um, you, we got a question. Go ahead, ladies and what is the price of his system for small? So there's, uh, we're, we're, we have a couple things going on. The, 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 we have a suggested uh, kind of kit, right? Which incorporates all aspects. It gives you a four by four tent, a three by three flood tray, a three by three rolling table, a 20 gallon reservoir, two automated fans, a true 650 watt dimmable light, um, you know, all the different things that you need. Uh, and that comes with the controller and all the sensors, water pump, air pump, air stones. Um, that is 2,500. Uh, and then the controller, the controller with the sensors by itself selling as a unit would, is 1,250. Okay. Any, any more, any more questions? So um, if, if they wanted to get in touch with you, yes, how would they go about that? So uh, we have several uh, websites up now. Um, they are still being built. Um, we're active on social media. I'm you know on social media all the time. Um, my company is KB Cultivators uh, okay. and then KB Laboratories. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean we're online. Please hop on, check us out. We're you know our our, our site's still uh, still being built out. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're we're tracking through. Well, what's going to happen now, um, everybody that comes into this door becomes a part of the people to people family. Fantastic. So, yo, Alex, I'm, what I'm excited about as you move forth and you get more knowledge that you'll stay in touch, we will. Absolutely. And then you'll say, yo, Rodney, we need to get back on and talk more about the information so that yeah. we can be able to help people mm -hmm. to be able to know they can purchase these things. Absolutely. And then be in control of what they're doing and what they're putting in their bodies. Absolutely. Because that's really important. Yeah. I'm going to go back... Um, and what another thing that I want to commend you on as well. See, I like when uh, an individual is being transparent. And when you talked about, you know, you made some bad decisions uh, uh, young, right? What is it, if you could tell somebody out there right now that's making those bad decisions, what level did you arrive to to get you where you had enough common sense, strength, and spiritual growth to make those changes? Um, I'll be honest, it took me losing everything. Um, I, within one week, um, lost my fiance, I lost my job, I became homeless, and had negatively affected so many people uh, immediately around me um, that you know, my own, my own, I told myself my only, that was my only option. There's only a couple places that, you know, you can, you can go from rock bottom. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, so, um, yeah, you know, I, I had, um, you know, I, I, I had negatively affected some people, um, and, and it was accidental. Um, but you know, that, that doesn't change the fact that they were negatively affected. Right. You know, right. uh, and, and that's something that weighs really heavily on me because it's, um, my, my method is never, I've only ever wanted to help people, you yeah. know? Um, so that was, you know, that's, that's kind of like the burden that I carry and what, uh, what kind of helps keep me through and kind of keep my sight focused on this is, um, you know, I truly believe I have the ability to positively affect a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we can truly change the face of agriculture with the the information the 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 you know the metrics and the database that, that we're building from this well i want to tell you that you have already affected me um you're encouraging me for different levels of things that i need to focus on um one of the things that again 
I'm very conscious about my my body right now. I'll be 62 and and about 30 30 days or whatever, not far. And um, I'm starting to really be conscious about um, where I am and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But again, it's for individuals that's out there that's probably struggling. Um, Alex, he 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 was again he was uh, uh, honest and transparent about his situation and, and where he was, is somebody out there, you gotta realize this. He has just showed you that there is a process that even when you hit rock bottom, you can float back to the top. Absolutely. And it, that's 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 really man. I really man, I appreciate you appreciate not giving that. up on life. I'm telling you, um I I'm 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 pretty sure I'm a little older than you are. And, uh, but I just want to tell you that I, I commend you, man. I appreciate you know, that. That's much respect to you. Thank you very much. You know, because what you don't realize is there's somebody out there is going to watch this program and they're going to realize <clears throat> that you can make a change, that it's not over. It's not, it's not over. Excuse me. Let me drink some water. Y'all might think I'm getting emotional. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of choking. <laughs> mm. uh, but. What I was thinking is just somebody out there needed to hear that. Yeah. You don't. You you know, guy. What you're doing is you you're bringing information, and then you you put it to a point where people will be able to really make some changes. And I'm talking about get the kit. You purchase the kit, you're able to start to manufacture, and you'll be able to dictate and 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 start to make things the way you want them. Absolutely. And doing it legally. Yeah, doing it legal, And that's the big thing. You know, I, I built this system out so that, you know, my 70-plus-year-old mother uh, can, you know, get it and grow her tomatoes all year round. She can grow her basil. She can grow her different herbs. She can, she's not, you know, she doesn't have to go outside and worry about the rain and, not, you know. This is the system, it's built to, to bridge that gap. You know, we, we want people to have... Um, the power of knowledge, right. right? Like the power of knowledge is a beautiful thing, um, and yeah, I think that this is how we're going to do that. That way, as you know, it's going to be a lot of people just going to be afraid to make those changes. I know it was something floating in my head, and 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 this was really funny. So one day I was in uh, Costco's and I was grabbing these uh, grapes, mm -hmm. and since we were talking about growing stuff, the this the young lady saw the grapes and it had the grapes had seeds in it mm -hmm. and she said where did you find the grapes with the seeds in it and I didn't understand her being so excited but then I also realized you know what I hadn't seen many grapes with seeds in it right so as I thought about it later and I remember coming home and I told my wife I think I was telling her about the lady was excited about it I realized that Along the line, we're talking about growing, developing things, you know, getting it where there's beneficiary for certain people, whatever the case may be. Somebody figured out how to grow the grapes without the seed. Right. And that was funny because I was like, okay, but something like that doesn't stop right there. Right. That's that's yeah. So that's that's selective breeding, right? The 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 growers, commercial growers, want to produce, um, you know, as much viable product as possible, right? So, so through selective breeding, uh, you know, this type of uh, grape that they picked up is known for producing less seeds, and then they breed that with, you know, another type of grape, and so on and so forth, until they have the viable product that they want to. To move forward with and which in a in a in the long run it's not whether it's going to do any damage to you because it don't have the seeds in it no it's just to a point where it's just probably easier for you to enjoy while you're sitting down eating absolutely <laughs> so evol you know the that that whole it, it's a very interesting thing right um so when i first went to university i studied forensic biology and one of the neatest things that i had learned is um I, I can't remember the name of the species and everything else, but the, the way that our teacher presented it to us when we were talking about, um, you know, kind of evolution and, and like how the genetics and everything works, there's a, a species of spider uh, in Africa, right? And the way that that uh, spider escapes its prey is it has essentially 
prickly hairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when it's attacked, uh, attacked or anything like that, it essentially jettisons these hairs and it creates this very foul taste and blah, 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 and the predator will drop the spider, okay? About 100 miles away from there, the exact same species of spider exists, but this spider doesn't have that hair because over the course of time, that exact same species grew to not need that specifically because of their environment, right? So over the course of time, it's the exact same genus, exact same species, exact same spider, except without that white hair defense, right? And it's it's that same line of thinking. That's how the, the genetic breeding works, right? They, they uh, over time, you know, put, uh, breed out those specific characteristics, right? right? So 100 miles away, the spiders that were, you know, mating better were the ones without the white hair, right? And that produced the lineage of them. It's the exact same spider, but without that defense. A hundred miles north of there, that same spider has the white hair defense. And, and a lot of these things can naturally be done. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, that's a, that's a... Just a natural process. That's a nature, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is nature incarnate of, of showing that. So, so is that how we come to be able to understand to be at the level where you are now from things like that, from nature? Uh, I, you know, I think that I've always been interested in, in, you know, biology and kind of, you know, evolution and genetics and like all these different things. Um, so I've, I try to take that same approach, right? I, I don't, I don't currently do, uh, selective breeding, uh, for different strains. It's something that I'd like to get into. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's certainly, that is, that is the progression, right? We learn to, um, not necessarily manipulate, but um, facilitate our plants to its fullest extent. And when we've brought out those genetics to its fullest extent, we then would look to breed it with another plant that has admirable characteristics. Your different phenotypes and everything else, uh, genotypes rather, phenotypes that it's producing, uh, that's how we work off of it, right? So all, all of a sudden you had one plant that, uh, well, this plant makes me like too sleepy. Well, this plant makes me too uh, excited. Well, let's put them together so that we get a nice balance and I'm able to you know, work throughout my day without highs and lows because of my anxiety, right? So you start getting into these different things where you're, you're, you're designing your medicine. You're designing your medicine based on your needs. And this is the organic way to do that. So I, I, I'm probably getting ready to get some side eyes but I'm gonna take. I'm probably going to uh, see if I can hook up with some fellas, and we can start getting some organic individuals, so that we can have them that they don't talk back, and they don't do things. They don't fix the food the way we want it, and they do exactly what we ask them mm-hmm. to do. And then you ain't got to worry about it no more, and you can keep them for 20, 30 years. How about that? There you go. <laughs> and you know, then I can see some of the women out there saying, "Yeah, okay, yeah, Rodney did. You just stuck your foot in your mouth because they're gonna get us the same way." But no, um, with much do respect to everybody. Uh, like I said, it's really, really important that you be paying attention to what you put in your body, how you go about it. I mean, when I got out of this interview today, which is really, really powerful, and that is, is that you can make changes in your life. You can dictate your tomorrow by, not only by, I'm saying, what you eat, but I'm talking about your physical aspect, your mental. I mean, we listening to you, Alex, man, that was really, really just listening to where you were and where you are today. Um, I, 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 I'm, I heard you mention your 10-year-old daughter, right? She should be very, very proud of her father. Thank you. You know, because um, what you are doing is showing her that it's not so much you can fall down, but get up. The, uh, the name of my system is the Centralized Automation Management Integration System, or simply CAMI for short. My daughter's name is Camille. Okay. And the reason that that works is because genuinely this is for them. Yeah. This is for, you know, the future. Uh, this is for, you know, 
I love it. The people that are going to be coming in in these advancements of technology. I mean, I grew up in the digital age, right? So August 14th, 1991 is the first time the internet became commercially commercially available to, to the public. I grew up during that era, right? My access to information, uh, my ability and access to, to knowledge and information is, I, I mean, my daughter could op openly use my iPhone by the time she was one and a half. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, 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 the children and the people that are growing up during these times, we're setting a foundation. Yeah. You know? It's providing at least something solid to work off of so that we can all do better. That, that's what's really, again, what's really important for individuals like yourself. Remember, it's not just about you, it's about them. And that's important. Yeah. People got to realize we, we got to look into the future and provide things for our children, our grandchildren, so that they're going to be much better than we were. Now, see, I was born in the 60s. Dude, I saw the 8-track tape. I saw the CD. I saw the microwave. Let me tell you something. It was funny. When the cell phone came out, believe me, only person had a cell phone was a doctor and a drug dealer. Okay? Now and, they're one and the same thing. Yeah. Ba -dum -ts. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, and I mean, but we're talking about we're talking about where technology is now. Like our kids, my granddaughter, she can get on the um, on the cell phone, and my grandson, they can go through the through the cell phone and do things I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at where we are today, but it's it's very important for us to be able to do, like you said, Alex. You you you, you put it where we start to think about their future mm -hmm. and give them that opportunity to have a much better chance at surviving. Um, getting to the point, I tell you, I know this is going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be in my lifetime, but I can tell you this: it's going to be one time where we're not going to be worried about cancer. We're not going to be worried about. Uh, uh, um, diabetes and things those those things have been really disrupting a lot of people's lives man it's going to be what we're going to be able to really be able to uh make a difference from individuals like yourself who are given these different levels of knowledge on creating good healthy foods um uh growing medicines and we talking about like uh uh mint and um um uh, the other herbs yeah. that are herbs, yeah, all yeah. Of that. I mean, it's not it's not just intrinsic to to marijuana, right? You know, they, it's, they, that's, yeah. yeah. There's so many different strawberries, tomatoes, yes. herbs, like all of these different things that that you can do. Um, you know, again, man, like I I com I've competed nationally in bodybuilding, right? And I can tell you that as a heavyweight bodybuilder, uh, seventy percent of what I do is based on my diet. So now that I'm gonna sneak a little couple of minutes in there real quick, I'm gonna ask you this. What I want to know is, uh, for me, because I'm, I'm that's what I'm working on in my diet. Yeah. So what do I do to? The first thing that I tell everyone who wants to start a new health journey is to get checked out by your doctor first. Get blood work, figure out exactly where your levels are, and figure out what your system actually looks like right get all the information be aware oh uh you know i have uh high blood pressure right didn't even know okay you know you have to know these things because going at anything in life unprepared and without the proper knowledge you're setting yourself up to fail you know or at least you're setting yourself up with the idea of something that may not happen you know um people come into fitness with ideas of I'm just gonna work real hard for a short amount of time, I'll be good and I'll figure it out and I'll still go out drinking and eating all weekend long and Monday through Friday I'll just be real strict and it'll balance out and that's not how it works, you know? Um, so I would say start with your doctor, get your yearly physical, get your blood work done, see where all of that is and then work from there. You know, because without that information, you're just throwing darts in the dark, honestly. Because my method of approach for, for what for what I need is going to be vastly different from, from what you need. Right. right. So me coming in and telling you, you need to eat six meals a day of, you know, X amount of calories and this and that, well, that's what works for me. What works for you is going to be very different. Health, uh, you know, diet, exercise, and cardio. 
those are all those are the three things that you know to to concentrate on uh, for for your health, um, your heart health, right? Your heart's a muscle. You know, getting cardio and walking, being active. Um, it's about working with your body and where it is at that time of life. Yeah. You know, yeah. my grandmother's ninety seven and still does two and a half miles a day and goes to the gym six days a week. I'm very thoroughly convinced she'll be Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 all about how you take care of yourself. Well, Alex, I appreciate you. You got the last words. I, 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 he pretty much did. Um, first of all, I want to tell you that you are an amazing man. Thank you. Um, uh, kudos to where you are today. Um, you, you welcome. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give you my card. Please. But, yes. but what I want you to know is, I don't want you to hesitate when you feel like it's some information you want to share. You more than welcome to come back to people to people anytime, man. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You'll you, be you'll be the first. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. So, hey, everybody that joined in, this is Alec Bacon, and uh, this gentleman, man, is a phenomenal gentleman with uh, uh, a lot of good information, and we appreciate you for sharing. Thank you very thank much you. for allowing me to to come in and and spread my word. Not a problem. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Oh, what you got over there? A question just jumped in. <laughs> How can you get rid of squirrels and birds? He ain't no, he not no uh, trapper. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know. Oh, so they, they I, have might, two, they, I have two Great Danes. So no, they, they must a, be talking about in their plants. Oh, but but yeah, they, yeah, what you do is you get a BB gun. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I don't want to get in uh, trouble. No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'm not. You know, honestly, I, I'm not one for uh, uh for for you know, using like pesticides or, or anything like that, but, you know, conditioning your area uh, and, and, and setting it up uh, to, to maximize, you know, your, your farm yield, right? It's, um, you know, what, what you're, you're putting in, you know, you're gonna get out. And if you're, you're in a position or an area that is, you know. Overwhelmed with yeah, squirrels. Yeah, I mean. What you, what, what I, 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 suggest, I can't control a deer. Yeah, yeah. I can't control a squirrel. Well, we have right? problem like, with deers. So what I do is this, certain things I put out there to make sure that they don't, they're not comfortable, things they don't like to taste, those things what you want to do. You can, if you're growing stuff outside, put some screen around it. Mm -hmm. Make it so that they're not comfortable coming. Because one thing about animals, animals remember when they get hurt or it's something that they don't like and they won't go near it again. So um, that whoever uh, put that question out, Yo, what I highly recommend you do, A, is make it uncomfortable for them to be in your um, things that you're growing, and I promise you they'll leave it alone. So, uh, we appreciate everybody that joined in. Mr. Alex, you are welcome to come back anytime. Thank you, Rod. It's People to People with Rodney Grimes. I thank you. Join in and come back and see us. And again, happy uh, birthday! You had a birthday you. on the fifth, so yes, sir. That's Cinco de Mayo. Days. You, you know you gotta keep celebrating now. Ah, uh, yes, that's what they're telling me. Yeah, Margaritas, celebrate. You, know? you, you gotta keep on celebrating, my man. Thank you. Thank you, guys.